my name is Carlos, and in this video, I'll go over rendering with multiple threads in After Effects. So I'll go ahead and turn off Render Boss in the other machines. So this is the only one rendering. Now let's go to After Effects. I have this come from Nexus that I'm going to use as an example. I will just add it to the queue as normal, and instead of hitting Render, I will send it to Render Boss. If you notice on the settings here, you can see that multiple machines slash threads is not selected. And what this will do is just send the project basically as is into Render Boss and Render Boss will just render in the background or another computer will take over, but it will render in just, if it's video files, it will render in just one computer. It will actually try to render in all the computers and everything, but one machine will take it, the other ones will notice that it's, the file is locked and they will stop. So it will only render in one machine. So here, if you notice here, when I try to click add threads, yeah, it just doesn't let me. But sometimes that's what you want. If you're only rendering one machine, either the one you're working on or a different one in your network, if the computer doesn't have enough RAM or CPU cores, this will be the fastest way because there's no need to merge all the frames at the end. So be aware that that exists. Don't check the multiple thread slash machines option if you're only using it in one machine in one thread. All right, now let's move on. Let's, let's add more threads. All right, so let me show you the controls real quick. Here is the CPU and free RAM gauges, and they basically just tell you how much free RAM and how loaded the CPU is. Next, we have the thread busing style, and you can set this to manual if you, well, manually <laughs> want to say how many threads you want to start every render with or change them in real time. You can add or decrease threads while the render is happening. Um, and that's why the CPU and free RAM gauges are there for actually, so if you want to do that. Now, you can also set it to any of the other four modes which are automatically handled. And the difference between all four of them is how aggressive they are. But even on the automatic modes, if you want to remove or add threads while the render is happening, you can still do that. And that leads me to the thread controls. So we have two sections, starting threads and current threads. Starting threads on manual mode, it's just how many threads are going to be run at the beginning of each render. Current threads, well, let me start this render and show you current threads. Okay. So current threads will tell you how many threads are running at the moment. And you can change it almost at any point. The only exception is when Render Boss is actually doing the final video files, because at that point, all your frames are rendered, it's just putting it together. Here you can see that it's currently rendered the temp files for this render, and it's using three threads. Every one of these frames that says skipping, that means that it was done by a different thread than the original, the main thread. Now, let's go forward a little bit. At some point, usually around 90%, the render will change from temp files to the actual video file, and that means that all the frames are done, and it's just putting the final video file together. Now, let's go back. Let's try one of the automatic modes. And if you set it to one of the automatic modes, starting threads actually becomes target threads, because on most of the automatic modes, except for Dictator, the, each render will actually start with just one thread, and render boss will try to reach the target threads depending on, on how much RAM and CPU is available. And it will keep monitoring it until the render finishes. Here you can see that when I change modes, the amount of target threads changes. Number of target threads is calculated depending on the mode and how much RAM and CPU you have again. You can change this if you want though. You can have one mode and then change the actual number of target threads that you want. Let's see how that works. And we should see it adding a thread in a little bit. There we go. So let's speed this up a little bit. Render Boss will continue to monitor the CPU and RAM and adding threads or removing threads accordingly. You can see here that it reached the target threads of five and the CPU is not at 100%, but there's just not enough RAM to add more threads. So if the CPU and the RAM were high enough, it would, it would add threads as it is fed. It just gets less aggressive once it reaches the target threads. Now it's working on the final video files, just putting the frames together. 
and that only takes one thread so all the other ones are going to start dying out until it finishes and that's it render done multi-threaded great let me give you some caveats about multi-threading in general because sometimes it's not the best solution in those cases if you have a second computer like a like a laptop or or, or any other slower machine it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be a brand new machine you'll be better served by putting them in a network and have them render together and you can still use RenderBoss to handle all that for you anyway first you have to make sure you have enough RAM for all the threads that you're going to run After Effects takes a lot of memory and if you don't have enough RAM for all the threads they're just going to slow each other down Generally speaking, you want to have at least 3 or 4 gigs of RAM per thread. Second thing to look out for is some effects, especially third party effects, are already optimized for multiple cores. So when those effects run, each one will automatically try to use all your CPUs already. If you're running multiple instances of that, each one is going to slow each other down. This one is not as serious. Let, let's say you have one effect that's optimized and all the other ones are not you will still gain some speed by using multiple threads just something to look out for and the last thing to look out for is GPU some effects now are optimized for GPU and if you have several instances of that effect running and each one wants to use all of your GPU RAM and GPU processing power that also might be a factor in slowing the render down now, most effects that have the option of using the GPU usually have an option to limit the amount of GPU memory that they use. And some of them also have an option to limit the amount of CPU cores to solve the previous point. For example, a neat video, if you go on the options to Tools, Preferences, Performance, you can select how many cores you want and how much of the video card memory you want to use. I usually like to run two to three threads, so I have neat video to use three cores and 30% of the GPU memory. And that's worked really well for me. Just something to keep an eye on if you're having performance issues. You can lower the demands of some effects, and that will allow for the other effects to run multi-threaded, while the effects that are already optimized for multi-threaded not choking your system. And I think that covers pretty much all you need to know about multi-threaded rendering. If you have questions, feel free to comment or email me. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.